climate change tops the agenda of the World Economic Forum's annual meeting in Switzerland this week. Despite that, President Donald Trump is calling global warming activists, quote, prophets of doom at the international conference today. Because this is a time for tremendous hope and joy and optimism and action. But to embrace the possibilities of tomorrow, we must reject the perennial prophets of doom and their predictions of the apocalypse. Now, one of our next guests might take issue with that characterization. He recently introduced a resolution in Chicago's city council declaring a state of climate emergency. The plan calls for citywide budgetary measures and policies to reduce carbon emissions, but some worry about its economic impact on Chicago businesses. Joining us are 47th Ward Alderman Matt Martin, a co-sponsor of the climate emergency resolution, and Frank Lassay, president of the Heartland Institute, a libertarian and conservative think tank. Welcome to Chicago tonight to both of you. Good to be here. So, Alderman Martin, let's start with you. What prompted you to introduce this ordinance? I think a big challenge that we're facing here in the city is the fact that when you've got a presidential administration that's not willing to tackle climate change with the uh, aggressiveness and the thoughtfulness that's necessary, it really comes, like many other issues, to the city to think about what we're going to do. And so knowing that we can no longer sit on the sidelines, that all, although our resources are more modest, that we need to come together, city council working with the mayor's administration to not only declare what is going on, but also use that as a framing device to talk about what the appropriate next steps will be. Frank Lassay, do you agree with what we just heard, the president's characterization of uh, activists as prophets of doom? Yeah, and I think they're also prophets of profitability. Uh, there's huge, huge money of taxpayer money and subsidies and mandates that are involved in wind energy, solar energy, and this whole movement, and it is a movement, it's almost a religion to some, and it's really much to do about nothing. Um, we have a gently warming, wetter world than it was before. CO2 is plant food. It's good for plants, which are good for people. Worldwide harvests are up. We have almost 8 billion people in the world, and we are feeding more of them. Poverty is down around the world, and people forget and don't think about it, but petroleum is part of our life in everything that we do, from your toothpaste to your yoga pants to concrete. There is a lot of petroleum used in all kinds of different things. Uh, Chicago would be much better spent than the citizens of Chicago on spending this money on something imminent uh, that could be you know, nurses in schools, more teachers, uh, property tax relief. Uh, closing the billion dollar, almost a billion dollar budget deficit. There's a lot of other things that I think would be um, much better to spend time and energy on than climate. Then what is your reaction then to the Chicago Declaration of Climate Emergency? Well, I, I think I think you'd be much better off not not doing it, not passing it, and um, focus on things that really make real world differences to people. Trying to mitigate CO2 and trying to do any real world effect is very expensive, and we don't have any alternative. Uh, and that's, that's really the truth is there is no alternative unless we go back to living in huts and, and not getting food transported and grown in fields to people here in the cities. There, there, isn't, there aren't electric big trucks. There aren't electric things that go out in the farm fields. Um, oh, Martin, what, all those things. What's your reaction? So I think that the residents of Chicago expect city council to walk and chew gum at the same time. So respectfully, while the issues you identified um, are significant, our budgetary issues, education issues and the like, affordable housing, I think that we need to be tackling those as well as um, issues involving un our environment. And I don't think you need to walk very far to see the implications for a lack of addressing that in a fulsome way. You can look at our lake shore and the fact that Rogers Park extending all the way down to South Shore and beyond that we're losing um, um, tremendous uh, shoreline at hugely significant cost. Also, the frequency and severity of particular storms are leading to um, flooding that's become exceptionally problematic. We've had, I think, the third uh, wettest year on record. It was last year in 2019 here in Chicago, the second warmest. And there's a, a relationship between the two. The warmer it gets, the more water vapor stays in the air. And then as you have really severe storms, it means that there's less time in storms instead of uh, ice storms or snowstorms, um, water, uh, rainstorms, uh, you, you're not seeing that permeability. Um, so the, the flooding is tremendous. And I can tell you, talking with residents, it's, it's a huge issue right now. So then what would an emergency climate mobilization look like? Yeah, so I think part of it is working with the administration to say, we have a number of issues that we've lined up, whether it's the Environmental Protection Committee or beyond that, uh, reconstituting the Department of Environment. And so this declaration is table setting. So we can deal with things like an EV readiness program with larger new development 
elements. Um, Alderman Brendan Riley and I are working on a bill to improve um, the EV charging capabilities in newer developments. It's talking about banning styrofoam, reducing our reliance on single-use plastics. We're talking about um, investing in our tree canopy, making sure that we have more permeable systems, so that as opposed to grass or even grass as opposed to um, asphalt and concrete. There are a number of things that have already been introduced, other things that are in the hopper, so we know what's coming next. This is going to be an important framing device for us. So some of the conditions listed in the resolution, extreme weather, rising ocean levels, you just talked about lake levels, uh, wildfires. Um, Frank Lasse, are these, are these reasons to limit our carbon footprint? We are, oceans are rising at historical levels. It started about 1850 at the end of the Little Ice Age, and we've had gently warming since then. Oceans have been rising about eight-tenths of one inch per decade for the last 150 years. There's no acceleration that hasn't changed. We've been warming at a regular rate a little bit since 1850. It was warmer from about 900 to about 1300 when the Vikings lived in Greenland. It was warmer in the uh, pre-Christ times from about 700 BC until now. There's a reason why Romans wore togas and walked around in shorts. It was warm back then. Uh, we are not anywhere near those warm times. So, and those are good times for humans. We have more food, more plant food, and, and I don't think we need to do any of those things. And the money would be better spent as, as if any of these things happen, that we spend it on mitigation versus trying to stop a natural event that's already occurring. Um, and those are, those are important considerations. Why spend money on it? And some of the things you mentioned, permeability, grass instead of concrete, uh, trees instead of grass, where you can do that, those are good things that we should be doing. And um, we should be doing all of those sort of things, but to go about saying, well, we're gonna switch over to renewable energies at a huge cost, I think, is a waste of money. And we shouldn't be wasting money when there are so many other priorities that really affect people's lives. Alderman Martin, you, um, you're a co-sponsor on the single-use plastic and styrofoam ban that was introduced in City Council last week. Uh, what would that ordinance do if passed? Yeah, so there are two big things that would do. One is starting January 1st of 2021, it would ban the use um, of single-use styrofoam containers, both in terms of what's provided to customers at the point of sale as well as preparation. It would also require that for single-use plastic, um, that for a number of things uh, involving that, plates, uh, straws, and the like, that you would have to affirmatively add ask for that. Um, and obviously there are some exceptions built in in terms of economic hardships, especially for our smaller businesses. We think that that's sensible and I think that there's a, a ready-made um, industry in place for things like compostable materials, um, if you're going to dine in using reusable forks, knives, plates and the like. Um, so I think this is a, a common sense uh, proposal and we look forward to working with um, folks all around the table of different perspectives to make sure that something smart gets passed. Frank say what's your stance on uh, reducing pollutants via this kind of ordinance? Well, I think reducing pollutants, are, real pollutants are a good idea. CO2 is, is not a real pollutant. Um, and going back to the water and the lakes, I'm old enough and, and grew up on the Great Lakes, spent a lot of time, and, and I've heard the climate change and global warming was causing the lakes, Lake Michigan, to go up and down. In my lifetime, I've seen it at record highs and record lows twice in both directions. Right now it's at a high. We had a very wet, wet uh, last couple of years, um, but climate cycles up and down. And like I said, in my lifetime, I've seen it where the beaches are really long and other times where there's no beach and there's erosion. And we're almost out of time though, but I just want to, I just want to hear you out on uh, single use plastic and styrofoam. Do you support banning those or are you concerned about the ramifications? Well, what replaces them? And those are the real, real world questions. What are the, what are the replacements? How do they serve consumers? And what are the costs involved with those? And, um, you know, the alderman has mentioned some type of mitigation or exceptions for some small businesses, and then you create winners and losers. Um, it makes it more difficult. And you know, where it makes sense, yeah, we should do all those sort of things. Um, where it doesn't, we'll or it's very it costful, costly, we should. Thank you to Frank Lassay and Alderman Matt Martin. And we're back with more Chicago tonight just ahead, so please stay